It's a bit of a special show, not just because you're here. Of but, course, but of course. For, for the, the program that we have on the show, the schedule, because we're going to talk transfers mm -hmm. already, especially here in England, not so much in the rest of Europe, where it's quite slow, but here it's in full flow. Yep. All the big clubs especially are either signing players or getting close to signing players. So we're going to talk about all your favorite clubs, everybody who's already signed someone or is on the verge of. And to start... I felt that we had to talk about the two biggest ones so far. They're yeah. not yet done completely, but it looks like Vargel to City and Havertz to Arsenal are very close. Mm. And they're the biggest in terms of the players involved, the money involved, and the clubs where they, they, go involve, they, they are involved in those deals. Let's start with Vargel because we know that quite a lot of things could be happening at City this summer in terms of departures. The yep. likes of Mares, Bernardo Silva, Gundogan, he's already gone, Cancelo, Laporte. Laporte. Yep. Do you feel like a centre-back is something that can benefit the team and the squad and that was what I want? I think when you see or hear the stuff about Laporte potentially leaving, then yes, you don't really like to see one leave and then no, but nothing come yeah. back in. But it also feels like that's a section where they've been quite strong anyway. I think Ake did a great job at left back and there have been times when Kanji's done it and so on. I thought maybe they'd lean towards more that side. But Gvardiol is one of the you know, biggest prospects yeah. in sort of like world football at this moment in time. And if you can bring in someone of that sort of age, then you know, you're not just buying him for two, three years. This could be a guy where like other city players where he's there for five, six, seven, eight years. Mm. So I, I do I do like it. I'll be interested to see what Guardiola's sort of like go to team will be come like October, November time yeah. because at the start of the season it could be anything, you know. Yeah. But yeah, he's, I think it's an exciting signing. I think the fee is the standard fee for whatever people can pay these days. But yeah, I, I, I like it. I like to see good players come into the Premier League and go into the City as well. So I, I don't mind it. What do you think? So, so the price is around 100 million euros, we think. Maybe like give and take, uh, which I think for someone his age, as you say, he's 22 years old and there's been a bit of inconsistency at Leipzig in terms of why he, what he does on the pitch. Yeah. In the, in, the, in the World Cup where we both saw him, he was magnificent. And I think, I wonder if it's more down to the environment at Leipzig and where the team was maybe more than him himself. I think he can step up easily to a team like City, to a coach like Guardiola and to, uh, to, to that kind of environment. But it is a lot of money yeah. still. I think that if you lose a Laporte left-footed centre-back, you replace him with another left-footed centre-back. And right now, there are not that many who are as good as Gvardiol is. Yeah. So if you're the best in Europe, which City are, you go for what you can find the best in Europe in that position that you want to strengthen. Right? Yeah. It makes sense. Yeah, it, it does make sense. You're right, though. Like, when you said 100 million euros, like my eyes watered a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> but, but do you know what I mean? You can't... At some point in your life, you have to accept that the fees are the fees. Yeah. You know, it's what people say they want to receive is what people receive, and that's just what it is. Like At this moment in time, he's worth 100 million euros because somebody's prepared to pay it. Maybe in a Very few true. years' time, like for where his game will be, you know, they can sense the potential. He's 22 yeah, yeah, years yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. that's like Completely. That's, that's really good. I think it's interesting. The last time he played at City was in the Champions League game when they lost 7-0 as well. He had such yeah, a bad yeah, day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we've heard his name being spoken about for two years. Not everyone's seen Leipzig games all the time. We can see that he is a great prospect, see how he did for Croatia at the World Cup. So, yeah, it's a, it's a good signing. I think it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, teams don't have one left foot centre back. City have him and Ake, Dutch yeah. international. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure their business is not over. That's the no, big thing for maybe. sure. But, you know, just to finish on, on, on Vargel and City, there's something about the centre backs or the defenders that Pepper signed, certainly recently. I don't count Mangala and yeah, people yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. You're just. But Ruben Diaz hit the ground running and was magnificent from the beginning. Laporte had a really good spell. Okay, yeah. now maybe less so, but Akanji Peppers transformed him and the team has transformed him to someone that Dortmund didn't want anymore to an yeah. outstanding player. Ake, as you said, yeah. you know, from Bournemouth to City to make the step up. Yeah. And I, I just think that Wenger used to struggle a bit with defenders at times, with certainly centre-backs. With Pep, it seems that, I mean, to be fair, they haven't got many transfers wrong. Yeah, they haven't. They have had some big ones, which we might mention further down the road or whatever. But ultimately, I think for what I like about what City do and what Guardiola does, he wants his defenders to defend. He wants them to play the right passes. He wants them to be aggressive yeah. in terms of how they defend. And he wants them to take pride in stopping the ball going into their goal. That mentality, it seems like it kind of left football for a little while. Because when you looked at sort of attributes of players... 
for some reason, when it came down to recruitment for a few years, like defending wasn't even the top attribute. They wanted someone yeah. that could play a diagonal ball or somebody yeah, that could, yeah. you know what I mean? Like drop to midfield or do all this yeah. stuff. But you talk about Ruben Diaz, you ask, well, what's his best sort of like trait? He's a great defender. That's it. Yeah, that's, that's it. The that's one it. on one. He's, he's just. Great, he's yeah. a great defender. Yeah. You know what I mean? And other players within that setup can do that. And as a consequence, then, like, even when they're in possession, which is like 60% of the time in most games, they're not being asked to hit a 70 yard diagonal ball. They're not being asked to thread through balls yeah. to people in key areas. They're asked to be in the right place and to make the right decision, cover each other, be aggressive, try and win the ball back when you lose it, and ultimately just be there when it matters. And, you know, you look at it, and now the pool of talent that they need or would like is far bigger than yeah. it would have been in the past yeah, if definitely. you were asking for some of those more sort of like intricate parts of football. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.